Well, good morning, YouTube. This is another episode of Coffee and Comments with Cruise Man. I think I may have mentioned to you in the first episode that I got this really cool coffee mug from my brother. It's called an ember. And you might be able to see this little light down here at the bottom. And what that does is this mug actually keeps the coffee hot. So it actually has a heating element built into it. It's really cool because this coffee has been sitting here for probably 20 minutes while I get ready you know, for this video and coffee is still very hot. I think it lasts maybe a couple hours, two or three hours before it finally dies out, but you put it on a little recharger plate and it, it just seems to work really good. I use it almost every day. So let's get started. I've got some comments. First, I want to welcome you. I'm Cruise Man, and this is a channel where we talk about motorcycle stuff. Uh, there's a lot of Goldwing-related information here, but it's not all Goldwing-related. Some of it's just general motorcycle information. So this is a show where I just kind of talk. I don't really have any format other than I do like to cover some of the comments of yours that I've received in email or perhaps on the YouTube channel or Facebook. So I just like to address some of these comments. And what I do is during the month, I'll go pick out a few of these comments that I think are kind of unique or interesting or might make a good subject for a topic. And I'll uh, talk about them in this video. And I'll try to address those questions or those comments because I figure there's maybe other people that have had these same uh, questions come up. So we'll get into that in just a second, but I would like to take a second just to invite you, if this is your first time watching the channel, please take a second to subscribe and uh, click that little alarm button, that little bell, uh, and you will be notified when we come out with new videos. And at the end of this video, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help the channel with the YouTube rankings and stuff like that. Now, before we get started, the first thing I want to really mention is that I did pick a winner uh, in the first month, the drawing for the Google reviews. And I think I told you this last time that every month I'm going to pick just at random a review uh, that some one of you puts in on Google uh, of Cruise Man's Garage, the maintenance videos, or just the channel in general. Well, I picked a winner, but... I. I guess for some reason I thought through Google reviews I would have the ability to send the reviewer a Gmail message because you have to have a Gmail account, I believe, to put in a Google review. I'm not sure about that. Anyway, the winner is Larry Hadley. Larry, if you will send me an email and I will put the email address on the screen send me your email address or just email me so I can reply to you so that I can get you the Amazon gift card. So hopefully Larry Hadley, that's spelled H-A-D-L-E-Y, is watching this video. You are this month's winner of the Google review drawing. So just uh, let me know. Okay, the first comment that I'm going to address today has to do with Hill Start Assist. And I received this email from, from Larry Hilliard, another Larry. And uh, I'm just going to read the email to you. I hope everything's going fine with you. I have a question regarding Hill Start Assist. As I've told you before, I have a 2020 Goldwing Tour, and in the manual when describing HSA is exactly the same as the 2018, which is true. I still haven't figured out how to get this to work a year later and possibly isn't something wrong with my bike. And he goes on to describe the problem that he's having. Now, I think I exchanged two or three emails with Larry about this. And my understanding is the problem he was having was when he turned on the motorcycle, uh, he could see the Hill Start Assist light on the dash, and he would try to engage Hill Start Assist, and it wasn't working. He could not get it to engage by pulling on the brake lever. And I think what he did not realize is that you have to ride the motorcycle. It has to, I think, get up to three or four miles per hour, and then Hill Start Assist becomes active. So it's not even active until you've started the motorcycle moving. 
Now, the same is true when you come to a stop and you turn off the motorcycle. When you come to a stop, if you engage Hill Start Assist and then turn off the motorcycle, Hill Start Assist is no longer active. In other words, you can't use it like a parking brake or like an engine brake or a transmission brake. So you need to know that. That's why you have a separate parking brake on the DCT model. And of course, if you have a manual transmission, you can just put the motorcycle in gear. But the Hill Start Assist function only functions when the motorcycle's turned on, when the engine's running, and you've already gone up to, I think, three or four miles per hour. Then when you come to a stop on a hill, uh, incline or decline, you can then engage Hill Start Assist. So Larry, thank you for that question. There are probably a lot of other people that have tried the same thing. He just thought it wasn't working because he'd turn on the motorcycle, try to engage Hill Start Assist, and it wasn't working. At least I think that's what the problem was. Now this is a message from Dusky, Dusty Cat, Dusty Cat Roads. And I, okay, let's see here. Okay, he's talking about the Cena and uh, the Cena headsets and how they are not weatherproof. I went to New Zealand on a once-in-a-lifetime motorcycle trip with two friends. He had a 30K. They bought a two-pack, and we thought we were set. Second day, they got hit with leftovers of a typhoon, started raining. My 30K went through it fine, but both of theirs crapped out. Uh, even after drying them, they were toast. Cena would do nothing as they were bought on Amazon. So instead of coming through and saving an epic trip, they just said it wasn't their problem. The units were returned, and they went with Cardos after they got home. So for those of you that aren't familiar, uh, Cena headsets do not claim to be waterproof, while the Cardo headsets are. Uh, they're actually IP rated. So I think this is a, an example of somebody that has had an experience where the Cena did not hold up in the rain. Now, I've ridden for many years with Cenas. I've ridden in the rain. Now, I don't know that I've ridden in the leftovers of a typhoon, but I've ridden in some decent rain with the headset, and I've never had them fail. Uh, but it's certainly possible. The way they're designed, they certainly don't appear to be any kind of waterproof. But that said, um, I'm a little disappointed to hear. Uh, of course, I'm getting this uh, a message on a YouTube channel. I, I can't verify any of this. But I would be disappointed if Cena would not stand behind a product just because it was bought on Amazon. Now, I don't know about Cena. I have to research it. But a lot of companies sell their own products on Amazon. Uh, so in, in other words, Cena may actually have their own page on Amazon where they sell their products. I don't know if they do or not. It could be a third-party dealer or somebody. But it really shouldn't matter. If you have a receipt and you can show the date that they were purchased, uh, you should, Cena should stand behind the product. They shouldn't use Amazon as an excuse to not back the product. So again, I can't verify that, but that would be disturbing to me if that happened, because I've done videos for Cena. Now, they're not, they're not sponsored videos, but they've sent me products to review. I've always liked Cena products. I still use the 50S, uh, and the 50R. I don't use them exclusively. I also use Cardo Pack Talk Bold. I have multiple helmets, and I have these different headsets on different helmets. So depending on what day, what helmet I pick up, I'll use that headset. But anyway, Dusty Cat, I'm sorry that you had that experience, and I, you know, I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm disappointed to hear that. I get a lot of emails. I get a lot of uh, comments and messages people asking me to review dash cams. And I know uh, Don Smith just, you know, I'm sure you know who I'm talking about. Don Smith's a writing buddy of mine. And he has his own channel, uh, texastulane.com. Check out his channel. And he just recently bought a Garmin GPS. I believe it's called Drive Smart 65 or something like that. It's a Whatever it is, I think it's maybe their top of the line. It's got a big, beautiful 7-inch monitor. And it works with a wireless uh, backup camera. And I believe it even works with a wireless dash cam because Garmin has wireless dash cams too. This is my biggest issue with dash cams. 
Every system I've seen for motorcycles requires that you run a ton of wires. You have to run a, a wire to the camera in the back. You've got to run a wire to the camera in the front. And then you have a screen that you've got to mount somewhere. And it does record, you know, the video from both cameras. The problem is just too many wires, in my opinion. And I don't understand why in this day and age that needs to be a wired system, especially since Garmin has wireless cameras. What I don't know and what I don't think is that Garmin allows you to record that video. And that's a shame because those uh, like the Garmin XT and the DriveSmart 65 or whatever it's called does have a facility for a micro SD card. So it's feasible that you'd have enough room on a card to say record, at least record a loop of the last five or ten minutes. Here's what I'd really like to see. I'd like to see somebody come out with a wireless camera that you could mount to the front of the bike, maybe mount another one on the rear of the bike, maybe around the license plate, and I want it to communicate to the cell phone. You should be able to see the image of those cameras on your cell phone since you've already got the cell phone probably mounted on your bike anyway. And then you could just record the video to your cell phone. If you wanted to record, if you wanted to do a loop record, they'd have to have an app, obviously, to support this. Okay, next I've got a comment that was posted to my YouTube video, which I just did the other day, where I talked about getting new tires put on my 2018 Goldwing. And I think I mentioned in the title that there were Bridgestone tires. I really didn't talk about the tires in the video. But uh, this message is from John Keller, and he said, I was hoping to hear a little more about how you like the Bridgestones. Those are my go-to tires. Um, I take it if you put the 704 and 709, etc. on. Yes, I did. Um, I pulled up an old bill on tire replacement from a dealership in 2017. He paid $343 for two tires and getting them installed. So I guess that included the price of the tires, which really isn't bad. And I'm going to look into that next time. I've, For years, I've been buying tires online and then taking the bike to a dealer to have them put on the tires. I've never removed the wheels and taken the wheels in. I've always just let them do it, just take the wheels off the bike and put the tires on. And I'm going to check into a local dealers and see what they actually charge for a set of tires installed because I'm probably paying... $325 or $330 for a set of tires, I'm just guessing, especially the Bridgestones. And let, you know, let me know in the comments down below, what are you paying for tires at your dealership to get a set of tires installed? Because it maybe I'm paying more than I need to. I think I looked it up and a year ago I paid $144 to have two tires installed. And this time, I think I paid $157 to have two tires installed. Now, Maxim Honda quoted me $220 to have those same tires installed. So I saved about $70 by going to Al Lamb's Honda instead of going to Maxim Honda. Somebody asked me, you know, how much did I actually save? So that's is about $70. I'd like, uh, <clears throat> I will tell you a little more about the Bridgestone tires. I've been riding on Bridgestones since my 2005 Goldwing. It came, I bought it used, but it came with a set of Dunlop tires. And I can remember probably the first two weeks I had the motorcycle, the rear end almost came out from under me when I, it was wet. On a, I was on a wet street making a right turn. And I guess I gave it just a little bit of acceleration, and I could feel the, the back tire squirming on me. And ever since then, I thought, man, that's scary. Uh, so the next time I put tires on, I put on Bridgestones, and I've never had that problem with Bridgestones. They just seemed to be stickier. Now, you know, again, it was a used bike. I don't even know how old the tires were. I don't think they could have been more than a year or two old. So... I've just stuck with Bridgestones. I've always had good luck with them. I've always felt like I got decent mileage out of them. On my 2012 Goldwing, 2007 Goldwing, I might get 9,000 miles out of a set of Bridgestones. This last set that I just uh, replaced, I had a, just about 10,000 miles, and I, I seriously think I could have gone another couple thousand miles. They just didn't look that worn to me. 
I know on the previous Goldwing, when your tires would start getting to that 8,000, 9,000 mark, you could really tell the bike was riding rougher. You could, you could just feel it. You'd get more low speed wobble. On the highway, it just didn't ride as smooth. I never noticed that with these tires. I had 10,000 miles and they, to me, they felt just as smooth uh, as they did the day they put them on. Now, I know that some of you guys out there say you get 15,000, 18,000 miles on a set of tires. I have never been able to do that. I've never, I wouldn't trust it, to be honest with you. In fact, as many of you know, I'm taking a road trip to West Texas here uh, in about a week. And that's why I got the new tires put on. I didn't want to run the risk of using 10,000 mile tires on a 700 mile trip. So I just went ahead and put the new ones on because I just did. I like Bridgestones. I did get an email from somebody. I didn't put it in my uh, message list today, but I did get an email from someone yesterday, I believe, who said he has the Dunlop E4s. I guess that's their new top of the line tire. And he's got, I don't remember now, but it was a lot of miles, 13 or 14,000 miles on them. And he said they still look like they're in good shape that they have a different compound and that they last longer. They're, they're more, maybe more expensive up front, but you get a lot more wear out of these, these new Dunlop E4s. I'm going to look into that. And if any of you out there are running the Dunlop E4s, what has your experience been? Put it in the comments down below. Let everybody know. Let me know. Maybe I'll try a set of Dunlop E4s. Now, I got an interesting email. Let me see who this is from. I think it's from Bill Richardson. And he has a, I'm not sure if it's a 2018, 19, 20, I'm not sure. But he has an interesting <laughs> issue with his fuel gauge display. And he sent me a short video clip to show what it's doing. And basically, it's just doing some weird flashing stuff. Now, he said he had, I think he said he had about a half a tank of gas when this was happening. But he went and filled it up and it stopped. So he thinks it could be a fuel sensor or an issue with that. But I'm going to play this on the screen. And anybody out there that's had this happen to them on their Goldwing, let me know in the comments down below. And if it got resolved, let me know what you did to resolve the issue. Uh, I think he said when he filled his uh, fuel tank up that the problem went away, but he doesn't know if it's going to come back, obviously. I did get one more email, and I didn't put it in my group of messages to talk about today, but I think I want to mention it because it's somebody who had a Cardo, I believe it was a Pack Talk Bold. He has been unable to get it to work effectively with the CB radio. Now, I don't have a CB radio, so I can't speak to this. Now, Don has a CB on his bike, but he doesn't use Cardo. He uses Cena. But this uh, gentleman said he could not get the Cardo to work with the CB. Apparently, when you cue the mic, it doesn't kick in and for a few seconds. So whoever you're talking to, they miss the first few seconds of what you're saying. Something along those lines. Are any of you out there using a CB with a Cardo headset and having this issue? I'd like to know because he said he talked to Cardo about it. And uh, he implied that they know that it's a problem. They don't really have a resolution for it. He ended up getting rid of the Cardo headsets, going back to a Cena, And apparently it's not a problem with Cena. I will say, I just noticed something for the first time the other day. Actually, when it was on my way to get the tires replaced. I was using a helmet with the Cardo Pack Talk Black, which is the same as the Cardo Pack Talk Bold. And I, it's the first time I've tried using the Cardo with CarPlay. And I could not get it to work correctly. I tried to send a text message while I was riding and Siri could not understand or interpret what I was saying. So it obviously was a problem with the microphone. But I have used CarPlay with my Cena 50S. No problems. I can send text. I can receive text. No issues. So have any of you noticed any issues with Cardo Pack Talk Bold or Black and CarPlay or Android Auto? I don't know if it. I need to set my mic adjustments. I don't know if there's something I need. To, I, I really haven't looked into it. I, this just happened the other day. So I really haven't researched it. But I'd be curious to know if any of you are using Cardo with CarPlay 
uh, where you talk to Siri and have her either find directions someplace or send a text, receive a text, things like that. I'd be curious to know. So that pretty much wraps up this episode of Coffee and Comments. I want to thank you for joining me today. Please click that like button if you like this video, and I will see you on the next Cruise Man's Garage video.